so thank you rajiv for speaking to arivan risala so rajiv represents milagro and they've just entered the uae market uh, so we'll start with a brief about the home automation and the robotics market how have you seen it grown over the years so you know it has uh, grown extremely well in the last uh, 10 years or so and it has always grown the higher double digit uh, you know uh, numbers but the pandemic actually in the last one year has really hastened the growth of the robotics uh, market in india alone you know we have seen milagro growing by five folds in the last 12 months so i am extremely bullish uh, because uh, last couple of uh, months many other products have settled down to their original pre pandemic level but robots have not Okay so you mentioned covid-19 has opened up new opportunities so uh, we're talking about sectors like health you know uh, facilities management uh, health and safety sectors as well so how does milagro fit into the overall proposition so uh, you know if you look at uh, facility management alone so you require to clean the floors you require to clean the doors you require to clean the windows you require to clean the air ducts you require to maintain your pools you require to maintain your lawns and the more number of human beings do this job the more uh, you know chances of uh, passing the infection or the second wave you know which the governments as well as the public is uh, very wary of at this point in time also just imagine uh, someone sitting at the reception who is meeting every visitor coming to her or him and uh, it's a risk for that person so instead of that person if there's a humanoid sitting behind the reception and is doing the job uh, you know you are keeping the people safe so milagro's global mission is uh to eliminate humans serving other human beings for domestic chores or menial tasks by robot serving human beings and that's that's the objective and with this launch in the middle east we are one step closer to our uh, global mission so in terms of the product portfolio that you have uh, according to your experience uh, what kind of products have picked up a lot in terms of smart solutions for homes and offices as well so for the homes uh, what we have seen uh, globally is that the floor cleaning robots the demand has shot through the roof and uh, you know uh, globally now almost 36 37% of every uh, vacuum cleaner sold is a robotic vacuum cleaner uh, by units and by value it is much higher because one robotic vacuum cleaner costs almost about 2 to 3 times that of a ordinary uh, vacuum cleaner then window cleaning robots the demand has uh, gone up the pool cleaning robots the demand has gone up the lawn mowing robots that demand has gone up the air duct you know cleaning because dirty air getting circulated in enclosed spaces is one of the biggest uh, worries for people you know when they restart offices so air duct cleaning not just sweeping the dust but also sucking everything which may contain virus also is another sector which is opening up big time and humanoids as i said have uh, opened up we have also entered into the educational uh, segment where robots uh, you know education or stem education right from uh, you know nursery uh, to almost engineering where people can build humanoids uh, is also a very very big emerging sector so in terms of your long term goals for this region uh, you've just announced your partnership with blue ocean as well what are your um, key criteria for this year so uh, i think one very important uh, you know goal which we have is to make people aware Uh, of the presence of uh, milagro robots across the various uh, sectors demand or uh, revenues we are really not worried about because uh, you know the public is much more prepared to adopt these technologies than probably companies like us are prepared to give that technology because logistics or supply chains have really broken uh, in the last 6 7 months and have their own challenges uh component costs have really gone gone up tremendously so there are challenges on the company side supply side but on the demand side there is really no challenge uh, so you know it's futile to set goals uh you know which i believe in the robotics market will can be much much substantially overachieved uh, thank you rajiv for speaking to us it was nice thank having you. you with us today thank you thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you ganesh for speaking to arivan risala uh, let's start with a brief about the trends that you see for these kind of products in the regional market as is seen in the global market many countries in the middle east are actually reaching out to uh, humanoids into process uh, robots and also into artificial intelligence so it is something very similar that we notice in dubai 
But having said that, while Dubai is a hotbed of technology for innovation, uh, this particular category is at a very nascent stage. And a lot of pilot studies have happened in the field of education, in the field of uh, hospitality uh, and other uh, technological fields where uh, pilot run is run in the, in the space of humanoids especially. So that's where we are at this point in time and very happy to associate it with Blue Ocean to start this journey. So during the first phase of launch, uh, what kind of products are you going to focus on first? Uh, in phase number one, we'll probably look at the vacuum cleaning products. When I say vacuum cleaning, basically the uh, floor robots, the window robots, the pool robots and the lawn robots. Uh, but as we move on, we'll also have different uh, aspects like the humanoids, disinfection robots, the air uh, vent cleaning robots, etc. So that is a plan in a phase manner. In terms of approaching home and uh, you know office facilities management sector, uh, what are your regional plans? See, basically with each of the markets that we intend to get into, we have partners who are both into the offline, online space and also in the B2B space. So we'll be digitally reaching out to consumers to basically tap that particular segment. Um, in terms of your specific plans for the regional market, do you have any long-term goals in terms of opening up a regional office? Here in fact, in as we speak, we have opened an office in Dafsa okay. uh, to cater to the rest of the market. We believe in being closer to the market. So basically, we start with GCC as phase number one, move on to the rest of the Middle East. And also, the South Asian and European markets will be handled by this office. So that is the blueprint uh, in the future, in the immediate future. So 2020 was a you know, challenging year for every you know most of the companies in the, in the region and globally, globally as well. Um, things have started changing a little bit in 2021. What are your key plans for this year in terms of your regional strategies? See, basically, if you look at even during the pandemic, the biggest industry that has blossomed is the cleaning industry. People in their drive to maintain health and hygiene have ensured that they bought cleaning products, whether it is in the sustainable platform or basic cleaning like home cleaning, robotic products, etc. So I'm sure this will be the trend going into 2021 where we can have a multi-increase in terms of the uh, numbers. Uh, thank you Ganesh for speaking to Ariban Riesel. It was nice having you with us today. Thank you. Thank you Shahzad for speaking to Arabian Risala. Um, uh, we would like to speak about your uh, recent partnership with uh, Milagro. So what kind of products does it uh, cover and which markets are you going to handle? Okay, so Blue Ocean Global is a global master distributor and we are into technology business. So over the last seven, eight years we've been trying to move forward in that direction. And now we are partnering with Milagro which is at the you know cutting edge of technology. Uh, it's into automation, machine learning side of the business uh, on the uh, vacuum and you know these uh, robotic side of the business. So, uh, so we are moving in that direction, and that is our approach as an organization. And uh, we are into nearly forty countries in globally, out of which our core strength is Middle East Africa. However, we have now. Uh, footprint into uh, UK, Germany. So that is the direction. So we start here in the Middle East Africa and then we move on. So that's hopefully going to be a good partnership as we go along. Uh, how will Blue Ocean uh, use its uh, channel community, the distributor uh, you know, uh, network as well to gain traction for these kind of products in the market? So you know, our strength is into four verticals uh, in most of the countries. And these verticals are B2B, B2C, online and institutional. So we're going to be looking at every country and seeing okay, which segment would really be apt for this specific uh, category. And accordingly, we will try and see that we maximize our returns in that direction. So we have understood the fact that today it's no more just a single channel, it's more than one. As you all know that the online channel has boomed over the last couple of years, especially after COVID. So we are putting a lot of effort in that direction. However, we have a very strong foothold into retail and into the B2B and into the institutional side. So based on where the strength is, which country, which market, which segment, we will go ahead and put our efforts accordingly. Uh, will you be working with your existing uh, network or will you be also onboarding new partners into markets? So it will be both. So primarily it will be the existing network because our network is quite tech savvy, let's call it, because the kind of products we've got, because currently we have a product range of product which goes from decked IP technology 
right down to the now automation side and even uh, you know the uh, voice control like Alexa and stuff like that you know we have products uh, which work on the app or what especially the SDA category the small appliances so we have a pretty large portfolio and this snugs in beautifully into the segment uh, in terms of after sales service and RMA how are you going to handle that so we have our own after sales service because currently we operate with almost thousand different SKUs and uh, we have our own setup in terms of the products coming back so the fact of matter is that as far as consumer is concerned to keep him obviously very happy in terms of his you know experience of the brand it's important to have the facility to make it happen so we are quite confident about that uh, thank you Shahidat for speaking to Arvind Risala uh, it was nice having you with us today thank you thank you